Hey, what is going on guys? And today we will be tackling the bicord circuit. In previous videos, I alluded to the fact that this would be fairly difficult. Uh, however, I think you'll find that once we go through the steps together, uh, it's not much different to any of the previous ideal op amps that we've uh, tackled. And that even these last two op amps here, we've actually done those before. For this video, I've decided to give you the gain of the op amp. As with the previous video, if you feel inspired at any time, Feel free to pause the video, try and solve it on your own. Uh, if you don't get the right answer, that's okay, we can finish going through it together. Uh, and if you do, that's that's great, good work. I'm just going to delete this now and we'll move on with the analysis. Okay, so, as with previous steps, we're going to define currents entering and leaving nodes. Remember, these are ideal op amps. Also remember that we've seen both of these op amps before. We're also going to define voltages at the points here as V1 and here as V2. Okay, this makes it easy for us to relate V in to V1, V1 to V2, and finally V2 to V out. Because remember, our final goal is to find V out divided by V in. Okay, so let's start with the analysis of our third op amp first and work our way backwards. It's important to note that it doesn't matter the order that you do these in, and we're going to end up with three equations which we can then use to relate to one another to find V out divided by V in. I find it easier just going from the right hand side and working my way to the left. So we have one current going through resistor R5. That can be given by V2, as the voltage at this point is V2, subtract 0 volts, as this is an ideal op amp and it's grounded, divided by the resistor R5. Now this equals the current leaving. Sorry guys, just realized that this resistor here should also be R5. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so then the current leaving through the other resistor is simply zero volts as it's grounded, minus V out, divided by R5 again. As the R5s are common to both sides, we can simply cancel those, or in other words, we multiply through by R5, which gives us V2, equals negative VO. Okay, so we have our first equation. Now, let's move on to our second op amp. For our second op amp, we have one current flowing through the resistor R4, which can be given by V1 minus zero again, because this is an ideal op amp and it's grounded, divided by the resistance R4. And that equals the current traveling through the capacitor C2, which it can be given by zero minus V2, divided by the resistance of the capacitor, which as we've discussed previously is given by 1 over SC2, where C2 is the capacitance of that capacitor. Then, as we're dividing by a fraction, we can invert this and multiply, which gives us negative V2 SC2. Now, we can multiply through by R4 to remove the denominators, which gives us V1 equals negative V2, S, C2, R4. And we have our second equation. Everything's coming along nicely right now. We've still got a lot of algebra coming up, but for now, we're looking good. Okay, so let's just move this down so that we can still see our equation to do our analysis for our third op amp. Okay, so the analysis for our last op amp is essentially the same process as we've been doing previously, except there's four currents this time instead of our usual two. The voltage at this point here is V out. Note that it's directly connected to V out. Therefore, the current traveling through resistor R2 can be given by V out, subtract the voltage at this point here, ground, divided by resistance R2. Then we also have the current traveling through R1 entering the node, and that can be given by V in, subtract zero volts again, divided by the resistance R1. That equals the two currents leaving the node traveling through R3 and C1. The current traveling through R3 can be given by 0 minus V1, as the voltage at this point here is 0 volts, and the voltage here is V1, divided by R3, plus the current traveling through C1. Again, that's 0 volts minus V1, divided by 1 over SC1. Again, we're going to invert this and multiply, which gives us negative V1, SC1. Now, we can multiply through our whole equation by R1, R2, R3, and that will remove all of the denominators. This gives us VO 
the R2s cancel, we're left with R1, R3, plus VI, the R1s cancel, and we're left with R2, R3, equals negative V1, the R3s cancel, and we're left with R1, R2, minus V1, SC1, and then all of that multiplied by R1, R2, R3. Okay, so there we have it. We now have three equations in which we can relate to one another to find V out divided by V in. Let's do that now. Let's substitute V2 equals negative VO into our equation for V1. This gives us V1 equals VO S C2 R4. Then we can substitute our equation for V1 into our final equation and then rearrange for VO divided by VI. This gives us VO R1, R3, this term's unchanged, plus VI, R2, R3, this term again is unchanged, and that equals negative our term for V1, which is now VO, S, C2, R4, times R1, R2, subtract our V1 term again, which is VO, S, C2, R4, and then all of that times S, C1, R1, R2, R3. Okay, so I know this is looking a little bit messy now, but the only thing left to do is simply expand our brackets and then rearrange for VO divided by VI. First, let's move our VO term to the right-hand side of the equation. This gives us VI, R2, R3, equals, while we're doing this, let's also take the negative term out the front of all of our VO terms. Negative, and then inside the brackets, VO, S, C2, R4, R1, R2, that's simply our first term, plus, remember, the negative distributes, VO, we'll also expand these brackets here, our S terms become S squared, C1, C2, R1, R2, R3, R4, plus our term that we subtracted, VO, R1, R3. Remember, we did subtract this, but as we have the negative out the front of the brackets, that would distribute making this negative VO, R1, R3. Now, we can bring VO out the front of our brackets. The left-hand side remains unchanged. VI, R2, R3, equals negative VO times, I'm going to put our S squared term first, S squared, C1, C2, R1, R2, R3, R4, R1, R2, R3, R4, plus our S term second, S times C2, R1, R2, R4, plus our last term, which has no S, R1, R3. Okay guys, we're getting very close now. Let's divide through by negative and then the term inside our brackets, and let's also divide through by VI. That gives us VO divided by VI. I've just swapped the sides as well just to make it look a little bit more standard equals R2, R3 divided by our negative, don't forget that, and then as the denominator, S squared, C1, C2, R1 through 4, R3, R4, plus our S term, which is simply S, C2, R1, R2, R4, plus R1, R3. Okay guys, and that is it. That is our final answer. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, wait on a minute. This isn't the final answer you gave at the start. No, it's not. And we'll go through that right now. Okay, well, when talking about transfer functions of systems, we have what's called a standard form. 
and that simply says that the coefficient on the highest s term in the denominator is 1. But as you can see, the coefficient on our s squared term here is definitely not 1. So how can we make that 1? Well, the best way I can think of is to divide through by the coefficient on the s squared term. This will give us VO divided by VI, that's unchanged, equals dividing through by C1, C2, R1 through 4 gives us 1 on, remember the R2 and R3 would cancel, and then you'd simply be left with C1, C2, R1, R4. C1, C2, R1, R4. Now the coefficient on our s squared simply becomes 1, so we're left with s squared plus our s term, our c2, r1, r2, r4, and we'll be left with 1 divided by c1, r3, s, plus our last term. The r1, r3 would cancel, and we'd be left with 1 divided by c1, c2, r2, r4. And there we have it, we've got our final answer, and it matches what we had at the start, so that's great. Okay, so I know what you might be thinking, hey, why are you saying this bi-quad circuit is so useful? All that I've seen so far is we've got some really complex looking algebra, well that's fine, we'll go through that now. Now that we know how transfer functions affect bode plots, having a transfer function as follows gives us the ability to add two poles wherever we want, as this s squared term could be factored down to s plus a s plus b, where a and b would be our pole positions. So using this we could create ourselves a filter that has a steep roll-off at a point if we set a equal to b, or that has two different roll-off points a and b. So that's useful, yes, but I'm sure there's other ways that we could do this as well, and you would be right. But the bicord circuit also has many more functions that we haven't looked into in this one case. Firstly, before we move on, sorry, uh, there should be a negative at the front of this term here just forgot to carry that down. Note that we took V out divided by V in. This gave us an inverting amp from that negative out the front. Here. So, if we took V2 divided by V in, we would have that same transfer function without the inverting. Likewise, we can take from V1 or add other small op amp circuits around this to get either a notch filter or a band pass Really, the things that you can do with the bicord circuit are limitless. Okay guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that if you paused it and tried to solve it on your own that you got the right answer. If you didn't, I hope that you've watched through now and you know how to get the right answer. I know this one was quite long, so if you're stuck through, good work for sticking through it all. In the next video, we're likely to cover another op-amp circuit. However, this one's probably going to be a little bit harder we're also going to design this circuit to match a specific Butterworth transfer function. If you're not sure what the Butterworth transfer function is, I'd urge you to look it up before you watch the video. If not, we might go through a brief overview of it before we start. Okay guys, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.